never before um, have we had such robust weatherization standards in place with enforcement authority. The Texas Public Utility Commission on Thursday approved new mandatory weatherization rules for power plants. It's a response to the deadly winter storm blackouts in February. Commissioners determined they needed to take this action now with winter just around the corner. This is something our investigators have been following. An entire report following the outages in 2011 outlined best practices to better guard against extreme cold, but those recommendations were never made mandatory. Now power plant operators must implement winter weather preps from the report that came after the 2011 freeze. They'll also be required to fix any known acute issues resulting in the blackouts this year. Power companies have to submit a report to regulators laying out how they're preparing plants for winter weather. The deadline is December 1st. This is only phase one. Phase two will happen after ERCOT and the state climatologists finish a weather study. However, this does not address the issue of how freezing temperatures affected the supply of natural gas to power plants. The PUC points out they do not regulate gas plants. That's on the Texas Railroad Commission. Legislation passed by state lawmakers gives gas plants until fall of next year to meet weatherization requirements. The whistleblower lawsuit against Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton can continue for now. The Texas Third Court of Appeals ruled those fired after accusing the AG of abusing his office are protected under the state's whistleblower law. A year ago, a number of former aides accused the AG of bribery and tampering with government records. All ended up either resigning or being forced out. Several of them filed a whistleblower suit. Paxton's lawyers unsuccessfully argue that he was exempt from the law, saying that since he's an elected official, he's not a public employee. Paxton can still appeal the court's ruling. On the day of the ruling, the attorney general traveled to El Paso to announce new legal action by the state against the Biden administration. Paxton and the attorney general from Missouri co-filed a lawsuit demanding the federal government continue to build the border wall. Back in April, President Joe Biden canceled construction of the wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Paxton argues money already appropriated by Congress should fund contracts for construction. We are very discouraged by the lack of, of care by the president, the fact that he has done almost everything he can do to make it more difficult for our border towns and for our border states and even for the entire United States as we've watched our immigration problem become a massive problem. The lawsuit comes as Senate Republicans are putting new pressure on the White House to change its border strategy, but the heat is coming from both sides of the aisle. As Anna Wernicke shows us, some Democrats are also expressing concerns with how the border is being handled. I am fed up. Florida Republican Senator Rick Scott says the Biden administration's border strategy isn't working. We don't know who's coming across our border. Mayorkas needs to resign. Texas Senator John Cornyn says the president not only failed to secure the border, but has has taken actions that made the situation worse. The administration is not enforcing the law. They are engaging or embracing policies that actually actively encourage more illegal immigration. Corden is putting pressure on Congress to pass legislation that would include sending resources to help Border Patrol agents detain and process migrants more quickly. And the concerns are bipartisan, with some Democrats saying they aren't happy with the way the administration handled the surge of Haitian migrants last month. In a Senate confirmation hearing on Tuesday, New Jersey Democratic Senator Bob Menendez asked President Biden's nominee for Commissioner of Customs and Border Protection how he will address future surges. What will you do in your role as commissioner to address these operational missteps? I think we can always do better, perhaps being more prepared, working with other federal agencies, working with state and local agencies. Menendez says he also wants Congress to address immigration. He says Democrats are pushing for a pathway to citizenship for illegal immigrants in their budget reconciliation bill. In Washington, Anna Warnicke for State of Texas. Texas Congresswoman Veronica Escobar this week introduced a new bill aimed at overhauling how asylum claims are handled. The El Paso Democrats bill would create five new humanitarian processing centers at the border. The centers would screen people to determine whether they qualify for asylum or other immigration relief. The bill proposes that workers who are not law enforcement agents handle the screenings. Escobar's bill would also limit the amount of time a person can be held at a processing center to 15 days.
A woman claimed she was forced out of the Texas State Guard because of her weight. Our investigation found the military department doesn't kick everyone out who doesn't meet the requirement. So why some and not all what we found out?